then you begin to suffer. And as you suffer, the motivation eventually arises of going deeper, of finding the place where there is no suffering. And you could still suffer a little bit on the external level of your life. So sooner or later we find in our life that life does things to us, seemingly putting obstacles in our path, seemingly having bad intentions towards us. We experience diminishment in some form. Of course, the ego says, or the egoic self says, that's terrible. I don't want any diminishment. When dealing with loss, Paul McKenna and Eckhart Tolle are two of my favorite mentors to help to reinforce with NLP and hypnosis and in the case of Eckhart Tolle just helping to listen to his voice and his advice on loss and grief because in moments of loss and sadness we need as much support and as much mental reprogramming as possible and a lot of the reason is because our education about grief and loss is based on you know the funerals and the crying and um, the whole issue of death in the case of losing um, physically losing a loved one or a family member or a pet that we loved as well you know our pets are very dear to us and losing um, a dog or a cat that we love or a pet that we love can be so sad and so traumatic even in people's lives when we have a lot of attachment to the the animal that we love and I think it's important to have as many tools as possible to help us through those moments because it's very very difficult to keep um, your higher vibration up in moments of loss and sadness and we tend to fall into depression and we tend to fall into um, finding it difficult to keep our lives going keep things moving in our lives you know doing the things where we have to do keeping our goals and our accomplishments and our and our dreams going when we're experiencing moments of of loss and and emotional pain and I want to suggest that you listen to the teachings of Eckhart Tolle, uh, his you know, three or four videos that are on his channel. Giving attention to the thoughts. Once you, once perhaps the thoughts have a limited usefulness, when the memory comes, it also brings up the feeling of his essence. The memories of the past, the feeling of essence is not, is now, it's alive now. If you can then give that more attention than to the thoughts, directing more attention there, closing your eyes perhaps, directing more attention there than to the memories. The memories were fine, but now they've taken you there. Or if fantasizing about future possible things that could have happened, again, bring attention as a conscious choice, take attention into the sense, that feeling of the essence of who he is, because the essence is. And then what you, this enables you to connect with the, the formless essence that was actually the thing that you loved and still love in him, the indestructible. And you can only find it through your own, so they come together really. When you feel him, you also feel yourself as part of that. And so, as a conscious choice then, take more attention to that if you can, if it's an occasion when it's not dangerous to close your eyes, then close your eyes and go in there and feel that and realize it's alive and it's now. So, um, use the teachings of Paul McKenna, the, the hypnosis and the audios that he offers, for confidence, for reprogramming, because if we can get past 
as fast as possible those lower vibes of grief and loss as quickly as possible we can really help ourselves move move past the stages um, that we have to go through when we're grieving something or someone something because even losing our business or our home or our belief systems that we have you know going through a, a crisis about belief systems and religion or um, can be also very very uh, traumatic and it's like a loss in your life as well the rigid mind structures give way they die first identification with that me mind made self goes that and this is why we're here because as you sit here you're finding death before death finds you <laughs> and these the heavy the mind structures that you have identified with as me the thought forms die so the flowering is happening here before death finds you you embrace death already so i also want to add a few of my own points to the this conversation because i think that when you know we're receiving things in life when we fall in love when we meet our loved one and we have these beautiful experiences of going through this energy of receiving from the universe we get lucky and we receive a windfall of money or we start an amazing business or we um, you know buy our first home and we move in it's just such a high energy it's so motivated it's so positive we go into this experience and we feel so good and so I want to ask you a question when you know you're lying on the edge of the ocean and the ocean comes in and it feels beautiful on your body and you're lying on the edge of the ocean and you feel the wave just coming up you're lying on the sand and you feel the wave come up through your body but then the wave also goes back out through your body and leaves and you receive the wave and the wave also goes out when you see a beautiful flower that's just bloomed or you pick that flower or someone gives you a bouquet of flowers it's it's so beautiful the moment of receiving those things when the flowers dies and the flowers have to be thrown away or the beautiful flower dies and it goes back to the earth you know we don't go oh where's the flower we don't go oh where's the ocean the water's going out it's going away i'm losing it we don't see it in that way in the same way we do when our loved ones come into our lives and our loved ones are also released and go back to the other side back to the earth physically and back to the universe uh, spiritually we're not trying to you know with the ocean and the beautiful flower we're not trying to hold it and keep it alive um, we allow it to return because we understand that it is part of the whole and I think it's really good in your in a moment of loss and grief when it's very challenging to feel good about what's happening I think the most important thing is to understand that flow the flow in and receiving and the flow out of letting go and we can practice this also in our energy by visualizing you know a wave coming in and breathing in see the wave coming in and if it's safe to do so just close your eyes and breathe in and visualize how it feels as you're laying on the edge of the beach and the water comes up and breathe in up through your head back out into the universe and the wave goes back out again and exhale and the wave goes back into the ocean and we don't feel loss or sadness because we know another wave is coming and another wave comes in and in just like in our lives we will receive love and beautiful beautiful experiences of attraction and connection and we will also 
release those experiences of attraction, love and connection back to the universe. And this is where I love the idea that Paul McKenna has about being really careful that in a moment, in a serious moment of loss, like for example, when we lose um, a family member that's very dear to us or a loved one or um, a life partner, when we go through that experience, if we stay energetically in our mind in the moment of trauma, in the moment of loss, because it is very traumatic and it is very sad. And we're so attached emotionally to the people and the things that we love that when we lose them, it is very painful. And if we remember to every time we feel sadness, we remember to close our eyes and to visualize the beautiful moments. What are the most beautiful moments that you can remember that you shared with that person? The moments of connection, the moments of attraction. If it's a, a parent or a child, the moments of beautiful love, the moments of beautiful experiences, sharing you know, a camping trip with your father or or with one of your children or with your siblings or with a loved partner and remember the way you felt with that person and hold each beautiful memory that you've lived through and that's why the teachings of Eckhart Tolle are so important as well because he teaches us to be present in our lives and if we're very present as we're living the relationship, we will have those beautiful memories for the rest of our lives. And that doesn't mean that we're going to live in the past when we go through loss. We will live in this moment, but instead of holding inside our bodies and our heart center the feeling of grief, work on changing that feeling of grief into a beautiful, happy memory. Every time you feel the sadness, you know, Paul McKenna clicks his fingers and says, happiness, what do you remember? What do you see? What was beautiful? What was so beautiful about that person? Put yourself back in that moment because loss is only feeling loss if we're feeling the moment of trauma and grief of you know, the funeral, of the sadness, of the tears, of the empathy feelings of sadness we have for all of those other loved ones who lost around us. If we go back a little further and we say, what did it feel like when I loved this person? What did it feel like when I experienced beautiful, beautiful experiences in the relationship? The most beautiful moments of connection, of, of making love, of having beautiful um, attraction when you first met. You know, hold all of those things into your heart and keep those things with you and allow the part of loss to just gently float away from your energy. And as you lose, you will also receive in your life other situations of people that are present in your life that you love and you lose one person and a lot of times when you lose one person like they say when you know a door opens and someone leaves you know the door opens and another person comes in you know so it's always this flow like the ocean and like our breath you know we breathe in and we receive from the universe we breathe out and we give back to the universe and it's the same you know, we breathe in and we receive a beautiful relationship and we breathe out and that person, you know, leaves our life in a physical way, but we can keep and hold all the beautiful energy of connection. And this is where it's so important to even practice this in our lives you know, on a daily basis, you know, receiving and letting go, receiving and letting go, just like our breath. And the same thing happens. It doesn't mean you won't go through the experiences and the steps of grief and they get all mixed up. And one moment we're 
you know, we're in the anger phase of grief, and the next moment we're in the sadness, and the next moment we're in this, you know, strange feeling of elation, and like, what's going on? Why am I feeling, you know, all of these different experiences that we go through emotionally with loss. But I think if we maintain the emotions and the beautiful feelings of our experience with that loved one, even though that loved one transitions into not a physical but into a more energetic position in our lives as long as we hold the beautiful moments and energy with us that person energetically is never lost and the physical loss is difficult but the energetic and the love and all the beautiful energy is always with you if you're able to maintain the memories the beautiful moments you know, so many times we remember only the really sad moments, the moments of, you know, seeing the person um, at the end of their lives. You know, many times someone is suffering, whether it's been an accident or whether it's been in the hospital or, you know, whether there was some kind of um, discord and argument and the person in that moment left your life. But if you don't hold on to that moment which was the traumatic moment of loss but you just go back a little further and hold on to the moments of beautiful memories the beautiful moments of love connection attraction abundance receiving you can keep that person in your life and with you forever and there is no there's physical loss but there is no emotional and energetic loss because any time you need or want to feel the energy of that person all you need to do is just to drop into your mind into your heart center use your beautiful heart center to create the presence and the energy of that person in your life and you know we don't have proof concrete proof but we do know from studies and people that have traveled to the other side and come back we do know that our loved ones walk with us are present with us and even for several generations back even love loved pets that we have their energy stays with us as beautiful little guardian angels and the only loss we have is the perceived loss that we have in our in our mind, in our physical 3D world. And this is why meditation and practicing mindfulness and practicing presence is so important because we need to be able to modulate our energy back and forth from being in the 3D world, the physical world, and then being in the world, in the energetic soul world of the other side of the curtain. And this way, when loss does come into our lives, we're able to manage these situations without us leaving um, in a situation, in an experience where we are uh, becoming, um, you know, unable to pass our, our beautiful moments in our lives in our new dreams and our new uh, experiences that we have, um, our plans and our goals, you know, in the moment of great loss, all of our plans and dreams can just go down, down a tube and be lost in that moment. And we want to be able to keep that presence in our lives and keep that ability to be able to maintain you know, uh, at least a certain level of balance. And uh, our light, our electricity just went out. <laughs> but I'm just gonna keep going with us. We don't need a backlight to have a good video. Um, so I think it's important that as we go through our process of grief and as we go through our process of um, loss, we keep that perspective and it is a very difficult thing to learn and this is where I really recommend people spend time 
um, spend time on those videos with Eckhart Tolle and spend time on the hypnosis therapies with, with Paul McKenna. They're just amazing tools. They're amazing mentors and they can help us so much pass through those moments of sadness and just keep working to create in your lives. And I think that this point is also important. It's not just for grief management. I think it's also important for our emotional state in our lives. If we have traumas and we have different experiences that were not the most pleasant experiences in our lives, I think we also have to learn to reprogram our mind as much as possible to be able to use our wonderful and beautiful experiences. Um, when were you lucky? When did you feel successful? You know, when did you feel confident? When did you feel really, really amazing happiness? And every time you find yourself not feeling at your best moment or at your most highest vibration, just remember, oh wow, I can just, oh, I just think of beautiful moments of attraction when I, you know, just met someone that you loved, you know, it's just, it's just a beautiful experience. You, you feel just such a high vibration. So why not keep that high vibrational experience in your life and not focus on the moment when that person went out of your life. Just keep the presence of the beautiful moment of when you had this amazing luck and synchronicity just flowed together in your life and boom, boom, this happened and that happened and all of a sudden you had this amazing windfall of money and everything flowed and your business worked amazing and you know, keep that moment present in your life Keep the vibration of those energies in your, in your presence, in your world, because those are the energies that are going to help you get to the next place to attract those things into your life. So it is really important to take times of meditation and mindfulness and, and presence to, to accumulate into your energy field as you're going through your day. Take moments, as I have feeling a little low energy, I didn't like the way this person, like I, I was trying to help this person and then all of a sudden this happened to me the other day, you know, I was trying to help this person who had experienced loss in a child uh, when they were, when they were younger, they had experienced loss as a child and I was commenting about how you can use these memories, these beautiful memories and I just saw them just tune right out and just ignore me. <laughs> It was really hard on my confidence. I almost felt a little bit embarrassed and I thought, well, um, you're obviously stepping in territory that they're not interested in what you're saying, but it's not personal. And yet I felt really unconfident and I thought, oh, you know, how am I going to help people if, you know, people that are close to me, you know, just tune out when I try to give them advice. I thought, wow, and I thought, stop it, you know. Remember, stop and remember a time when you tried to help someone and that person that you tried to help really appreciated and received your loving kindness and your and your advice they received it in a beautiful way and they thanked you for it and how good did that make you feel you know when i make a tiktok or a video and i get a comment and it says you know thank you for reminding me this or or you know i've seen your videos a few times and every time i feel so at peace when i walk Ah, oh, you know, just remember what did that feel like? You know, and so are you going to hold on to that moment when that person hurt you because you were trying to help them and they didn't understand or they just couldn't handle it in that moment because of their own traumas? Or are you going to go back to that moment where you saw that beautiful message and someone was grateful to your contribution in their lives? You know, take those beautiful moments and make sure that as you go through your day more and more, your awareness, you're becoming more consciously aware of that being the most important memory. What is the most important memory of happiness? When were you the most happy? You know, when were you feeling the most attracted, the most incredible connection that you felt with someone in your life? What did that feel like? You know, when was the moment you felt loved, really loved in a beautiful way? 
You know, when, when did you feel lucky? You know, when did you feel incredibly lucky? When did you feel confident, really, really confident, connected? You were just, you know, on your game, you were getting it done and it felt so good. And hold those moments and those memories with you as you go through your day. You know, keep that confidence and do the same thing with loss. You know, when you lose, you know, because I hate the word loss and I hate the word death because it's not true. You know, there's a physical loss in the 3D world. But I remember one of the most beautiful moments of loss that I had in my life. And it was a beautiful moment because I had just heard of the passing and the transition of one of my most favorite mentors. And I took a course, a medical intuitive course with Mel from Twin Flames, um, goldrightwinflames.com. And Mel was, um, Mel is an amazing presence in my life. And he became a friend and a mentor and a, a company in my life to go through some difficult situations and and to teach me and when I heard of his transition or his or his death, I heard a voice that said to me, now that I'm not here in the physical world, I'll be able to support you and be there for you in any moment that you need me. And I feel like the connection that I had with him was always a heart-centered connection. So there wasn't the same emotional loss um, it was a more high vibe spiritual connection. So, you know, he was always very careful to have that respect and keep all his connections with all his clients on a very high frequency and high vibe spiritual connection. And I literally heard his voice say to me, I will be closer to you now that I've transitioned to the other side. And anytime you need me, I will be right there. And it was so beautiful. I created a beautiful little place in our garden where we have a little fire that people can, you know, do a fire at nighttime. And I put his most favorite words on a tree there. Um, you know, he said, um, authentic, sincere, transparent, honest. Those are all the energies of a high vibrational human being. So I have a little place in my garden where I can go and sit and talk with Mel. And I never felt sadness at his transition and that was an amazing experience for me because um, usually when you lose a loved one and I loved Mel very much um, you feel this sadness and the minute I heard of his passing it was just this he just laughed and said to me he was just right there and he just laughed and said to me I'm gonna be even closer to you now that I'm gone and it was just wow it was an amazing experience and it really made me understand um, how, you know, it's the emotional connection of loss and the physical presence of the person because of the codependency that we create. But on the spiritual side and on the other dimension, at the higher dimension, there is no loss. So I hate that word. I hate the word loss. I hate the word death. Those words are so stupid. I think we should change it to, you know, I don't even like saying, oh, someone died. I like saying someone transitioned. In their lives and that helps people so much more but you know it's a culture of the funeral and the grieving and all the people crying and they charge you a lot of money for that you know just go check out how much it costs to buy a coffin in a burial site and go through that whole process this cultural process that we have to go through of this extreme grief it's almost a belief system and if we could break that belief system and have new ideas about people passing and transitioning. And there's cultures where when someone dies, they transition and there's a celebration and people have a huge party and they celebrate their achievements and their lives and they send them off to the other side with this beautiful, with dancing and music and, you know, that's the way I want my life to be celebrated. You know, I don't want people that love me um, crying and feeling sad and and going like oh you're gone can you imagine if your loved one is on the other side 
and they're watching you. They've, you know, they've died, they've passed, and they're watching you, and you're in tears, crying, and everyone's crying, and everyone's, and they're on the other side, and they're receiving their celebration on the other side, and they're looking back, and they're going, oh my goodness, everyone's so sad. I wish, you know, I'm right here. I wish you could all see me. I'm still gonna guide you. I'm still gonna be present in your lives. You know, don't, don't be sad. You know. And I think that's more the reality of what happens when someone dies. And, you know, I try to broach this topic, you know, carefully with a little bit of preamble and a little preparation and a little bit of talk about those tools that can help you. But at the end of the day, what I really wanted to bring forward here was that death and loss, you know, it's a belief system and it's um, something we've been programmed to see as a sadness. But... If other cultures see it in a different way, we could also change our belief system about losing and letting go and receiving and letting go in our lives. And I'm not saying that, oh, you know, you've got to be perfect and, you know, we're going to judge and criticize you if you have this physical loss of someone who you've been so close to physically and you're going to have tears and you're going to cry and it's a natural process because I do acknowledge the physical loss of the body. And if that person's not there to hold you or hug you or you know give you that physical presence, it's, it's gonna be very sad and I understand that. But we can, I think the moment you, know, you find out about someone passing, you can stop and say, oh, hi there. I can feel your presence now on the other side and you will always be with me now. I don't have to go call you and have a, a coffee to go see you anymore. I can just call you and say, hi, come and have a coffee with me. You know, just right here, right now. You know, and bring that person in. Just sit beside you for a moment and tell them how much you love them and receive their love even though they're on the other side and you can't see them physically. But you can only do that if you practice your meditations, if you practice being present, if you practice having that conscious awareness of not just being a physical body and a mind, but also being connected to have that presence on the other side. So I wish you the best of luck and love with this process. And I wish you all of the most high vibe and beautiful feelings that you can recreate in your life recreate happiness, recreate self-confidence, recreate attraction, connection, luck, abundance, love, and live those vibrations as much as you can. You know, with the minute you feel your vibe just dropping just below love, the, the frequency of love, you feel your vibe dropping into your emotional body and you don't feel good, then just, okay, what's a memory that can make me feel happy? What's a memory that makes me feel loved? What's a memory that makes me feel confident? Just go back in, do that, do that over and over again and you'll get to an amazing place in your life. Now at the end of this video, I want to leave you with a loving message from Paul McKenna, a beautiful example of his hypnosis for healing a broken heart. Just go on his channel, Paul McKenna, in YouTube and look up the healing a broken heart and you will find this one has been an amazing video that I have used to help myself find peace in moments of loss that's very difficult good luck with everything and try it out loss and suffering come into every life so we're never alone in our loss and life brings us new energy every day in every life, there are many, many relationships. And at some point in time, every relationship is special and every relationship has its time. And each of us has our own personal time. And every time passes and another time arrives and all relationships change and people change and you change now becoming more at ease, leaving the past behind, moving to the future, enjoying the presence of the present. The journey of life is like a story, and in good stories, all sorts of things happen. 
scary, difficult and painful, as well as beautiful, exciting and exhilarating. And a story can be a very good story, in spite of the sad things that happen. And each moment has something to teach us.